Okay, continuing our walk through Psalm 23, this is uh, session uh, 18. Uh, we have read through and we've uh, paused and pondered on different words and different phrases in Psalm 23. He says, all the days of my life. And so the application of this psalm can fit all the days of our life. The good days, the dreary days, the bland days, the exciting days, the dark days, the days of death. That's where we usually run up against this psalm is uh, in a funeral folder. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But it's way more than that. It is when you're going through difficult times, uh, just um, mentally times, or financial times, or marital times. But even when things are good, there's, there's ample uh, promises and truths here to help us uh, cope or respond or appreciate even good days. So let me read it and we'll pause and uh, we'll look at some more uh, thought, get some more thoughts on this psalm. Uh, psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk <clears throat> through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Boy, just a, a listing of uh, blessings and encouragements and helps there. Uh, the Lord is. The Lord is. There is a God. Uh, this thing is not out of control. This thing is not by chance. This is not a... A, an accident. You are not an accident. You are designed. You have a designer. You have a creator. You have a God who is uh, alive and well and real and engaged and um, uh, creative, inventive, controlling, all those kinds of things the Lord is. My personal, He can be. you can have a personal relationship with Him, and I trust that's true. For victory in life, that really is going to be the crux issue in all of this. I mean, you're, you're looking for help maybe in a valley. You're, <clears throat> you're looking for help in a relationship or something like that. <clears throat> it's really going to come because you have a personal relationship with God, my. And then if, if that's true, if you have a personal relationship with God through the death of Jesus Christ, then he becomes your shepherd, uh, your sheep. A sheep makes you weak. It makes you dumb. It makes you uh, needy. It, 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 it makes you uh, uh, susceptible to all kinds of things, right? <clears throat> but it also means you need to be in submission. You need to follow the shepherd. You need to obey the shepherd. You need to listen to the shepherd's voice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And so all these things, you know, he, he, he promises green pastures and contentment, still waters. Uh, he restores my soul, one of my favorites. Our soul can be vexed by the ways of the world. He restored that. And he leads us in the past. And sometimes those paths lead us into difficult places. Sometimes it's the death of a, <laughs> of a loved one, of a child or something. You know, the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no over evil. You are with me. You're riding your staff comfort. We talked about the table prepared in the presence of enemies. So even though he invites us to a banquet, even though things are good and, and, and things are rolling in a good way, we have enemies. And those enemies may be seated at our table. The, the enemies of our faith may be at our own table, may be our own child. Uh, you anoint my head with oil. That can be a blessing, that can be honoring, that can be um, uh, exalting somebody, but it also can be because um, you have uh, sin issues or you have uh, uh, nose flies, of, 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 uh, you're aggravated, you're agitated, you're irritated uh, by things. And so again, you know, that could be just helping with those kinds of things in our lives. Um, you, 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 my cup runs over, and the fact that you have a cup, that you have a place that God provides for you, and he provides for you more than you need, and that should cause us to be thankful. When we come to a couple phrases here, we're going to split into two. Surely goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. And the next time we'll look at surely mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely, without doubt. How can I know that it's without doubt? Well, really, it, it comes by just being a student of God's word over and over and over again. God keeps his word. Over again, God carries him through. Uh, the backside of all kinds of things turns out well. And it may turn out well in heaven, because I think about James in prison, he was killed. Peter got released, that's Acts chapter 12, but Peter, but James didn't. But to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. So again, the, the fact that over and over again, God comes through. 
and I've, I've, there's 20 videos that I've done just about impossible situations, but God. And God had brought people through impossible situations. And your situation may seem impossible. Well, maybe it is impossible. But no, it's not. Not with God. And again, that does not mean that he's going to restore you to a, uh, a fancy house here and a fancy car here. It might mean he takes you into his presence. And we need to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. If he gives, he takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he says, um, surely, without doubt, goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, goodness haunts us. Goodness dogs us. Goodness chases us. Goodness is chasing us to God. Goodness is chasing us to the shepherd. I mean, you think about a good sheep dog. A uh, sheep kind of wanders a little bit. That dog goes and barks and bites and it's, it's, it nips at its heels and pushes that sheep to the shepherd. So goodness should push me toward toward God. Let me just give you a few verses about goodness. Uh, Moses uh, talking to God on Mount Sinai, and uh, and he says, um, God, he said, I want to see you. And God says, uh, I will make all my goodness pass before you. So God, just even his very presence, just his very being is good. God is good. And then in Psalm 34, just that when God does pass by, God declares to Moses, he says, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness. God abounds in goodness. Now, what, what gets us in trouble in this is we define goodness different than God does. God's goodness is um, peace and joy and love. Uh, it, that doesn't necessarily mean health. That doesn't necessarily mean wealth. That doesn't necessarily mean wheel, which is happiness. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, peace. God's, God's goodness is uh, wrapped up in his character, who he is. And we wrap up goodness in things, stuff, you know, created things rather than the creator. So oftentimes the problem is with, with we, we struggle with God's goodness because we have defined goodness different than God does. In Psalm 73, I think it's kind of an interesting uh, passage. He talks about truly God is good. It starts that's in verse 1. Truly God is good. And then he gets to looking around in verse 12. It says, this is Psalm 73. These are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. I've cleansed my heart in vain. I've washed my hands in innocent. All day long I've been plagued and chastened. They get away with it. They have nice cars. They have nice stuff. They go on nice trips. They, everything goes well for them. And I have worked really hard to be honest, to, to be faithful, to be true to you, God. And my life's just a wreck. I, I've, I've cleansed my heart. I've washed my hands. And I've been plagued all day long. And he says, it um, uh, goes on down. When I thought to understand this in verse 16, too painful, too painful. Verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, and then I understood. See, because we're looking at the immediate rather than looking at the long. We look at today rather than looking at all of life or even into eternity. When I went to the sanctuary and I saw their end, then I understood. At the end of that chapter, he says again, but it is good for me to draw near to God. Because, again, for because what you say, because God is good in verse 1. So, again, oftentimes our problem with goodness is the fact that we define it by our standards rather than his. A um, couple verses here. Uh, Jesus declared no one is good except God, Luke 18, 19. 1 John 1, 5 tells us God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. He is never unholy. He is never unrighteous. He is never evil. He is never bad. God is good, God is perfect, God is uh, right all the time. There is no darkness in God. And let me just finish up with a, a couple, three verses here from uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, which remind us of God's goodness. And he says, surely goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. So we've got to be aware of what goodness is, and we've got to pay attention to God's goodness being bestowed upon us so that we respond well to that, so that we understand that God is good. God is pursuing us with goodness. Uh, when we start looking at it again from the world's perspective, we kind of get a, a, a skewed in that. But here are three verses out of Romans chapter 8. First, a well-known one. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Love God, called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. That could be a death. That could be a firing. That could be cancer. 
the end game, the long game, the eternal view is always, always, always good. Um, how about this one? Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. Is God good? He sent his own son to deal with sin. He sent his son into a wretched world. He sent his son into a sin-infested world. He sent his son to deal with my sin, to deal with sin. Does that not alone make God wonderfully, amazingly good? He is good because he did not spare his own son. He says that in verse um, 32. Um, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Is God good? Yes. All the time, yes. Most markedly seen in Jesus. But so we've got to have the right definition of good, and we've got to realize that God is good, always good, and God is up to good, and God will do good. So we are being hounded by God, by, the, by, by the God's goodness, and that should drive us to God, and that should cause us to be thankful. It should cause us to declare as the psalmist, surely goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. That would be true. If you're his, if you're saved, that's true. Goodness is following you all the days of your life. Pay attention, take note, give God thanks, give God glory, pass it on to others. Tell others about the goodness of God. Surely goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. May that be true in your life. God bless.